Before you watch this video, I want you to ask yourself the following questions. Are nurses important when it comes to healthcare in general? Are the nurses in Liberia qualified or to perform care? Um, if you, if at any point you answer no, will your experience then be based on the care that you received in the past? Or is it care provided to your relatives? These questions are intended to have you think before you start the whole name calling that all oh, these people over here in Liberia are not good nurses, they don't know how to treat, and or before you even start to offer a lack of compassion. For someone who started healthcare and worked in the healthcare field, I would attest to it that nurses are the pillar and backbone of healthcare. These individuals are in it because they truly care. They care about patients and those who are related to patients. So when you think about library nurses, remove a lack of competency, okay, as your primary issue. Instead, think about the inadequacies of resources, human resources, I mean, budgetary allocation, and the lack of proper leadership. Those are some of the primary things that you have to think about when you talk about Liberia's healthcare system. Notwithstanding, these problems can't only be talked about, but action should be inserted to forge ahead. You can't talk problems without giving solutions. This is where nurse to nurse comes in, and is nurse the number two nurse. This is where they come in. The nurse to nurse organization is an entity built to transform the lives of nurses through competencies and capacity building in Liberia. While Liberia is at a focal point, it is a focal point for this organization, the goal is to eventually reach others in places that are disadvantaged. Through this organization, nurses in Liberia can have access to equipment such as blood pressure cuffs, CPR equipment, that stethoscope, you guys, <laughs> thermometers, etc. They are tested for best practices through a competency checklist. The truth is, I will go on and on, but I don't want to do so. So let's hear from these amazing nurse to nurse workers. Everyone, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Emma. Hello. How are you? Hi. I'm good. I'm good. I'm blessed to be here today. How's it out there? It's, it's beautiful. It's getting warm and we like the heat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like California, we live in the heat. I know. Um, mm, if only. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, thanks for um, joining us here today to have this discussion and, you know, just share light on uh, Liberia and your involvement. Uh, but before I even go to all of the good things you guys are doing there in Liberia, I want to, um, you know, get to know your names and, um, you know, if you're Liberian and where, where it started, <laughs> where your life started. <laughs> Well, I can start. My yeah. name is Kolu Mator. I'm the CEO, founder of Nurse to Nurse. It's a nonprofit organization that we're going to be talking about today. And yes, I am Liberian. And uh, I've been in the States, United States, for, I'm going to say, a little over 35 years. Okay. So, yeah, I've been a nurse for maybe almost 29 of those years. Okay, excellent, excellent. We know who to call to get treatment. Who's uh oh, <laughs> I'm off the clock most of the time, but that's okay. Um, the next person, just tell us a little bit about yourself as well. Well, hi everyone. My name is Joselle. I'm the daughter of Kolu. Um, I am also the communications uh, director coordinator for for Nurse to Nurse as well. I'm a published author. And I'm not a nurse, but okay. I work in the healthcare field. So. <laughs> okay. okay, okay. We would like to read a book sometime. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Next person. Hi, my name is Famata Williams. I live in North Carolina. Born and raised in Liberia. I'm a nurse, been a nurse for about 15 years. Okay. Currently served in the U.S. Navy as a nurse. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Yes, thank you for indeed. your service. Yes, indeed. Adrian. 
Hello, my name is Adrian. Uh, I grew up here in the States, but uh, now my heart is in Liberia. My parents are Liberian. My whole family is Liberian. Um, okay. And I've been a nurse for about almost three years now. Okay. Uh, in the ER as well as inpatient. So very nice. Very I've nice. seen a lot. I was counting you nurses. Oh, we make it to that emergency room, even though we don't want to go there. But we would no, go. I know it's definitely, <laughs> yeah, it's different. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, we are now going to talk about uh, if you recall any memories of Liberia, right? So, for those who were born there or perhaps grew up there, can share your experience. And uh, Giselle, for example, you can just share your recent experience about Liberia or talk about your favorite food, whatever it is. We just want people to get familiar with, you know, your whole Liberian history or, you know, Liberia as it was to you. I was going to say, um, well, as for me, I was born in Liberia, yes, but I left when I was three. Okay. So, so there's not much I remember about like beer prior, but going back now, I think my first time going back was 2010, 11, since we yeah. went back yeah. um, around there. Yeah. And, um, you know, as much work as Liberia truly needs, it, um, it still felt like home. And okay. I, I bless God for that. It, I still felt at that time as at home when I was there. Of course, you know, you can't ever go wrong with Tobogi, ever. Okay. You can never go, go wrong with Kasali. You can't go wrong. You know, our our food is the best. And that's just what, what it comes I'll down it. to. I'll like, it. You know, and when you have it there, oh my goodness, you know, it, 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 it felt right. And, but also being there, seeing all that was truly, truly needed, it, um, it really puts that passion, that desire in you to want to, to help do, at least do your part to help make, the change that's needed so that our country can grow and it elevate. And, I like that. I like yeah. that. I don't know what's wrong. Everybody in the cassava leaf except me. <laughs> really? Nah. You don't like cassava leaf? <laughs> nah, I'm a girl. Yeah. You committed a <laughs> sin <laughs> just <laughs> now. <laughs> you committed a sin. Yeah, potato green still. That's right. Cassava leaf better than potato green. You can't go wrong with tabagi. That's for sure. With tabagi, yes. Yeah, that, that's for sure. Mm. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> well, I, you know, like I said um, in the beginning that the passion was actually born when we had to escape the war yeah. because we were not prepared to leave, you know, one of those things where, you know, you got a degree and um, you started to have in Liberia, like I went to the University of Liberia, I got a degree in biology and I minored in chemistry and our life was just about to begin. We're just about ready to start having fun. And then everything got cut shut. So I always say, like me and my husband will always say that we were cheated. You know, we're just about ready to start having fun and having family. And then we had to run. Right. Um, and then, of course, when you do that, it almost feels like um, there is no um, closure. Mm. And when you don't close, your spirit just and your little soul just doesn't rest. And that's where I think my whole self has been. I could just never rest 100% until, you know, I got the opportunity to want to do something in Liberia and I was able to then get a couple of people interested, you know, cause we had to run for our lives with the uh, mm -hmm. two year old that just was just talking about me being her daughter. And her brother who was being born on Ninth Street into somebody's house wow. because there was gunshot, a lot of shooting. I was showing Giselle um, on Ninth Street while we were there in March. And she said, but where's the house? I said, well, they broke it down. You know, she's like, I need to take this picture and show it to Namo and see where he was born. But yeah, when you don't fully get adjusted or plan to move and you are forced to move, that is something in you that never rests until there's a closure. So this is where whole nurse to nurse got started. And then of course, being a nurse, I thought in this area, we could be able to make a difference. So, yeah. Hmm. And this is, I mean, long story short. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot that went on into us escaping and you know, having a baby and running at the same time. Absolutely. Uh, and and, yeah. and it's a really unfortunate event mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. occurred. And I, 
believe a lot of viewers are going to resonate with this. And um, even me, I was born during the during the war, and my mom had to um, have mm. me in some type of like, church in Maryland. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so definitely yeah. uh, can relate to that. Yeah. Um, Samantha? <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Definitely, you cannot go wrong with tabagi. <laughs> it doesn't matter what kind beans, tabagi, ketchup, tabagi, banana, tabagi. Yeah, like I said earlier, I was born and raised in Liberia. When I came over here, I was a teenager then, so I remember almost everything that happened. I went through the 1990 mm. war. Mm. I went through the Ipresses. So going back and I came to America, I want to say in 2001, in 2001, my first time going back was in 2008. And then when I went back with nurse to nurse and for me, nothing had really changed. Mm. Things, if I would be earnest, I felt like we took a step backwards. Okay. Because mm -hmm. the place that I used to live when I went back there, it was unrecognizable. Yeah. I mean, houses were in the streets. Roads were terrible. Mm -hmm. But those nurses mm -hmm. were the only thing that stuck out to me. Yeah. Like those nurses know their job, just don't have any equipment. Yeah. And it, it was just, it was very emotional, especially when we went to the radio station and we had people calling, I mean, being so real, yeah. so raw. Yeah. And yeah. Everybody was just emotional. I, I remember oh, yeah. a gentleman who called and said his wife needed to have her baby and because he did not have the money, they wouldn't touch her. Oh, wow. And when you spoke to the nurses, they would tell you it's not it's not our policy that's the hospital policy yeah. so just being part of nurse to nurse where we can make a difference yes like bringing supplies it's just oh it's just amazing and i am mm. blessed to be part of nurse to nurse and i can't wait mm. to to go back amen, amen. Excellent. I, I, i'm gonna pivot to that in a little bit so andrew you can go ahead and you know give us a little bit of your experience and please don't sit to buggy, okay next <laughs> No, my favorite is cassava leaf. So, <laughs> and then you know it tasted even better back uh, in Liberia. But uh, my experience is definitely a little different than um, you guys can recount. But since I was born here, you know, most of my family came during the war too, um, and all of my like cousins are around my age. So we kind of all grew up around the culture, um, which is back in Maryland. So, um, you know, the food, like the customs and everything, it wasn't like a shock or anything when I went to Liberia, but my first time there was this past March and um, it was just eye opening for me, um, you know, being raised in America and then seeing where my family uh, was raised, what little we could, you know, find of it. Um, it just touched my heart to see the struggles as well as um, how strong the nurses were there. Um, them just telling me their stories of how, you know, like um, what uh, Famata touched on, they don't have as many supplies, they don't have as much um, resources. And um, it was just very inspiring to see how they work through that. And they still are able to deliver, you know, constant care. Um, for what they can and i was really touched on you know different ways in which they they kind of figured out how to um care for these patients and it was nice to kind of compare you know techniques with each other and everything yeah. so um it was very eye-opening you know i felt at home there too um a lot of my family has moved back now so you know seeing people that i grew up with you know again and um i was really just like um welcomed with open arms and um i will definitely be back i would love yeah. to have more of a role awesome. and um <laughs> i'm just thankful that god has allowed me to experience uh the motherland and in this way you know bring um you know um knowledge and and um my insight into nursing into their world so i'm really humbled that you know i was able to have this opportunity and yeah 
Um, thanks for sharing that. So, Thank you, Adrian. Viewers, as you guys, you guys are noticing a common pattern of the nursing conversation. So this is where I'm going to move to um, the essence of this video, pretty much the nurse to nurse found uh, organization. And I will, I, I will allow the CEO to talk about it and then others can come in. Um, Ms. Kolu, so yeah. your experience is shaped um, this foundation somewhat. Can you talk to us about the nurse to nurse, what it's about and your experience so far and, and others can obviously uh, chime in. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for, for allowing me to, uh, I'll try to be brief, you know, and stuff, because we have information on our website as well. Um, but originally, Nurse to Nurse was not Nurse to Nurse. It was actually just actually nothing. Okay. You know, it was in 2019 when um, the hospital system that I work for um, decided to change their uniform code. And during that time, everybody just, did, well, people didn't know what to do with their scrubs and because we were going to a whole new set of um, clothing. And so I was able to reach out to some of my colleagues um, who actually embraced the idea of letting us collect the uh, scrubs that nurses were not going to use anymore and uh, have it donated to Liberia. So that's how the whole thing actually really started. And as God will have it, um, it became, I mean, it just went viral in the hospital down to um, housekeeping, emergency room nurses, ICU nurses. There was just one text message that went out system-wise and everybody embraced that. We were able to collect about um, 7,000 sets of scrubs, which oh, were wow. really, I know, which we really were not expecting because, you know, most nurses, like I'm going to say, somebody said that we jump with the seat of our pants and we're not even thinking, okay, how do we send these? We just thought maybe we're going to get about a thousand and we could afford to, you know, ship them. But then, man, it was well received. So we collected those amounts sorted them out. Um, it became a big issue. Radio stations were here excited. Um, there were medical people, non-medical volunteers. Everybody were really excited. And so um, Samaritan Purse, I'm going to give them that credit because they did help us to fly them over to Liberia and kept them there for like three months until my daughter, Giselle, my husband, Joseph Mator, and me, actually, we went for a vacation and we decided to distribute these scrubs um, personally because we didn't want to just hand them over to um, you know authorities we wanted to make sure that we took them to the various healthcare centers and also to have an opportunity to look and see what those healthcare centers look like because i think that's what really sparked this whole nurse to nurse thing because as we were distributing from hospital to hospital i mean my gosh the need just got the passion for just wanting to do more got greater and greater and heavier and heavier on us because those facilities really needed help. And so we got back. Giselle did a great job. As always, she did a, some good documentations. And so came back and we shared the videos and I uh, will thank all, everybody who helped to contribute to these donations. And during that time that night in this house, um, you drop a pin and um, you could hear it. It got really quiet. And after that, you know, we just said, hey, what's going on, guys? And they all decided, I think we can do more than just scrubs. And that night, nurse to nurse, it's nurse in the number two in between. Nurse to nurse got birthed that night. And that's how we were able to elevate it to a, 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 a nonprofit 5013C status so that we will have more help to be able to go back and then help to do competencies, not just scrubs. So, and somebody said, how do you know what to do? I said, well, we went back to 20, the following year, 2020 for like a week. And uh, we did talk with the uh, chief nursing officer at the time and uh, the minister of health. And we had the Liberian Nurses Association present and uh, the board of nursing was also present and we had a short two hours meeting and everybody knew exactly what Liberia needed at that time. And there was competencies, you know, policies and procedures. And so we got back and we shared that. And from that point on, we said, well, Liberia has a lot of needs, but we have to stay focused in this lane, nurses helping nurses. And then while God's grace, once we get a system put in place, then maybe we can move to other 
un underserved communities. It could be Sierra Leone, it could be Ghana, it could be anywhere, depending on where the Lord leads us. But this is how Liberia got chosen because we were comfortable then. We knew how to navigate our system. And the ministry has been able to help us a lot um, with the staffing and the chief nursing officer to be able to um, mobilize the nurses from the various hospitals. So we just don't only do nursing competencies we actually leave with them equipments that they need to perform their jobs, like the stethoscope, the blood pressure cuff, the oxygen saturation probe, the thermometer and the CPR mask so that they can always be equipped to do. So our goal is educate, or our yeah, mission is educate, equip and empower, because we think that when nurses are very well equipped and they are educated and reminded on a regular basis. They will have the confidence that they need, you know, and stuff. We, we saw a lot of lack of confidence while we were there, not because they didn't know what to do, but because they just don't have anything to work with. And they were working very, very with minimal um, assistance. So, yeah, that's how we started. And uh, that's what Nurse to Nurse is all about. So we're needing more nurses from everywhere so that we can be able to train more. To this date, we've been able to train about 400, 200, 2023 was our first year. And uh, 2022, right, 200 nurses came through our competencies. Um, last, this year, 2023, we just got back in March and we were also able to have 200 more nurses. And so um, we got a lot of nurses in Liberia that we need to reach out to. So we need more help. Um, as far as manpower, you know, so that we can be able to do more. But I don't know if I'm jumping ahead of myself, but yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, uh, would you uh, ladies also like to jump in to, I mean, she already explained how, you know, the foundation came about and the, the mission statement pretty much about it. Do you want to add it to it or? Um, I think for me, uh, she pretty much said just about everything, and then it, it was it was excellent. You know, it was it was you know what 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 truly, it's amazing. Like she said, they the nurses there who are receiving the 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 competency, you know, the training, they are truly grateful. You, I mean, they they are in tune, they are focused, they want to learn more. You see them taking notes. They're they they're active. Yeah. They they truly um are they're so grateful for what it is that's being presented to to them so that they can take it and use it and be able to uh, properly apply it you know moving forward so it's really it's a it's a true blessing to to be a witness to so uh let me let me ask you this question how do you all pick those nurses you go to a hospital or you contact the ministry the ministry of health yeah. Um, and then you say, I need nurses. Like, how does the process work? The, the nurses. Well from, what, well, from what we've been able to do is that the minister has been able to designate a point person. Okay. Who has been the chief nursing officer, Diana Serta. She's the chief nursing officer now. And she's been able to work with her office staff very well. Very well. And what they do is they go from they call the various hospitals because we just tell them how many equipment bags that, you know, assessment kits that we have. And then they will um, be able to pick uh, uh, nurses from the various hospitals. It's not just one hospital because we've had nurses from, and these are all clinical nurses that already, they're not nursing students or anything like that. Okay. They're already practicing. Okay. And we try to stay focused more on the RN level yet, you know, so that way, Cause we didn't know where to start from, you know? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they were, they did all the logistics on the ground and, um, sometimes they will have a, maybe 10 persons, depending on how big the hospital is, 10 or 15 nurses representing in the hospital, they will come, um, and then, uh, go through the competencies. But at each of the various stations, they also provided us facilitators from their end, you know, clinical nurses that are already in leadership position that would actually man these different stations with us. For example, um, for the head to toe assessment station, which Adrian was actually manning, um, there was a, a, another nurse from Liberia. Um, Adrian, who was that again? I think her, 
It was Tane. Tane. Yeah, Tane. Yeah, she yeah, worked from the, the, at the, the army. military hospital. So military. he mm -hmm. actually worked that station with Adrian. Because the whole purpose here is for us to not just leave and then, you know, they don't have anything else to do when we leave. So then these facilitators then will be able to go from hospital to hospital and just see how those that went through the training, how well they're doing. So, yeah, that's how they were picked. But so, most of them were from the, I think, the Monrovia area. Um, the furthest they went, I think, was Firestone. Okay. Yeah, this time. But, you know, the goal is to move further back mm -hmm. as money and time will allow us to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you get there and you establish a baseline of maybe knowledge and, and to assess where the nurses are um, right. as far as their competencies. Mm -hmm. What is your process in knowing their improvement level? Well, we did do, we had uh, Dr. Schneider here, who is a clinical uh, uh, director here for our hospital. She's been working with me very, very well. Um, we did draw up pre-tests. Okay. Okay. That, was, that thing was like 16 questions. But each of those questions were actually generated from the various stations that their nurses would have gone through, the skills, different, different skill stations. Um, and so what we did was after we did some, um, how you call it? Customer service uh, discussions, Okay. <laughs> which we're going to use you next year for just get ready because <laughs> I think it's, it's really needed and everybody were actually crying for that. So after that, then we did the pre-test everybody, like 50 nurses came uh, each day. So then we did the pre-test. And then after the pre-test, then we went, then each person, I mean, groups, we had them in groups of 10, like five that went from one station to the next station, you know, and just getting mm -hmm. brushing up on their competencies. And then after the competencies, at the end of the day, they, we did a post-test. So that's how we're able to know that, you know, what we were doing was right and what we were doing over there was really needed because the result of the pre-test and the result of the post-test, that was a big difference. The post-test mm -hmm. was much better after they had gone through the competencies, which made them very happy, made all of us happy because- A lot more confident. You know, yeah, that's confident. how we're able to measure. And actually, based on what we did, we were able to then do a research paper and presented it to the uh, journal, Nursing Journal 2023, and it put us through a uh, you know, couple of reviews and stuff. And we were able to actually get accepted because they think that what we did was something that others could mm -hmm. also emulate mm -hmm. um, globally. Okay. So, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's very important to do like a follow-up. When you yeah. do research, you need to ensure right. that, you know, the, those that you're working with, that they have, you know, an endpoint. Right. And that they are uh, progressing. So that's really good. So as you, as you, Miss Cole, you probably know this more, um, but um, staggering cases have been uh, coming up out of Liberia, malaria every year. Uh, the number of people that die from malaria, you know, we don't need like a whole data to show, but it is mm -hmm. a yeah, know, right. prevalent thing that happens within the country. People die commonly from that, um, you know, and, and other illnesses that could that you know can rather be cured quickly you know with medical intervention right but we right. don't have some of the equipment like fatima said uh, Famata said mm -hmm. we don't have some of the equipment so you know people are not doing their job accordingly due mm -hmm. to sometimes the lack of so can you talk to us a little bit of what you know about the healthcare system um, so mm -hmm. far i just health care in liberia maybe based yeah. on your experience based on what you've observed yeah. um about yeah what well, we when we took the scrubs around from healthcare facility to the next, that's when I saw with my own two eyes, okay. really, you know, I, it was, I'm not going to call names of hospitals. Right. We have of to course. be a little bit more uh, respectful and all that stuff, but just the facilities and the, the environment, mm -hmm. the sanitation. Okay. Um, and even some of the clothes that the nurses were wearing. Okay. Um, and the dust. Okay. That was in those facilities. Okay. Because okay. I remember going to a specific hospital in uh, Kakata, and I won't tell you which one. Of course. Uh -huh. And our and the truck that we had the scrubs in backed up mm. and stopped, and all this dust, you know how it, it goes. 
was in the air. Yeah. But unfortunately, the room right at the uh, parking lot that we parked into, the door, so it was like a double door. Okay. Because I'm thinking that I'm getting in there now to be able to find now where I can find a nursing administrator so we can be able to distribute these scrubs. Actually, that door with the dust going right in was the emergency room and it was the, it was the operating room. Ah, okay. okay. I'm telling you. And in that room, they had a young baby there and they were trying to start IV. I think it was like a three-month-old baby. Mm, 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 okay. You know, trying to start IVs and and what they were trying to start the IVs with just unbelievable. So I, I'm saying just to say that I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just of course, saying, of course, mm -hmm. the sanitation, the the, the 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 equipment that's available, um, and just then just the technical know how. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, what's the when you when you don't have policies and procedures that you've lost, how do you? practice on how to start IVs properly. How do you practice on how to insert a Foley catheter properly? They're doing their best, but from what we're seeing is that most of those practices are outdated. There are no best practices right? So right. In, in most places. Don't Best get me part. wrong. I didn't go everywhere. I'm just trying to, from what I observe. Right, right. And, and and viewers, I just want you guys to understand this is, again, based on her observation. Right. This is not a totality of what is happening all over the country. Exactly. Okay, so I, I, right. I want you guys to understand, again, if you observe something, you're stating it unnecessarily, right. so, and you're painting the picture of that is how right. it is. Right. So I want us all to just be on the same page. Um, what is that a scene for you, from Fomata, uh, Adrian, and Giselle as well, based on your observation? Yes. Yeah, it was very similar. similar. Go ahead, Fomata. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was very similar for me. I did not have the opportunity to visit the hospitals back home. I, I think we have, we went to the newly opened dialysis center, the only dialysis center in Liberia. Right, okay. right, by JFK. And yeah, yeah, by JFK, right. And that was, that was good to see the nurses were still being trained, mm -hmm. I believe, by nurses from Nigeria or Ghana, one of those countries. Okay. So, that was nice. It was clean, but it's just one. But that's a start. But then that you speak to nurses all the time. We build bonds with some of those nurses that we worked with. The first year that we went, I did uh, what Adrian did this time. They had to toe assessment table with Tani, and, and we talked a lot. And she told me, she said, "For Mata, we know what to do. We just don't have the equipment, yeah. and we just mm -hmm. don't have the facility." Yeah. So those nurses, they are, and uh, I remember talking to Auntie Kolu, I'm like, I think one of these trips, we need to go in the hospital and even right. learn from there. Because I'm telling you, they are very competent. Technically, mm. they have the skills, but they don't have no materials. They don't have no evidence-based practice. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's the right. same mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. they have been doing over and over. It worked for one person. It probably will work for another person. So there's no evidence base. There's no supplies. I mean, the technology is just not there. So this is why I read it like nurse to nurse because we're not just going and talking. We're doing something. We're leaving them with supplies and right. not just personal supplies, but supplies that they can use or equipment that they can use to train other nurses like um we staff, I believe, 15 hospitals with those domains for CPR. Mm -hmm. I remember one nurse telling us every time a patient comes, if they don't hear anything, they don't feel anything, they consider that patient dead. And I remember one of our nurses just bust up crying. She's like, I'm just thinking how many patients they would have done CPR and brought them back and just put them in the grave, right. you know, because nobody had any kind of training to start CPR. I mean, we, we're going somewhere, hopefully. Yes. And prayerfully. We are, getting yes. there little by little. But it's a work in progress. Yeah. I mean, that's my hope, definitely, for the years to come so that we can actually go to the different facilities. Yeah. Not just the hospitals, but even, like, the intake screening facilities, you know, the people that um, end up, you know, uh, transferring people to a larger facility just to see how that like congruence of care is yeah. um, kind of to see how the healthcare system 
works in Liberia, because I'm sure it's very different than here. Um, and just kind of looking at how things progress. So maybe the people that see the patients first in those outside facilities, you know, we can see how they can better transfer people or things like that. But um, for me, I wasn't able to go to those facilities either, but I did speak to Tane a lot um, about, you know, she worked in, and I think JFK as well as like the army hospital. So she's seen a kind of a couple different um, settings. And she was kind of explaining to me how even us, now that we're establishing the competencies, it's important for them to have like protocols and policies, like you were saying, policies and procedures, yes. Place so that when they do see those patients, even though they may not have um, all the means, at least they understand, okay, well, if we do have it today, then this is how it goes. Yeah. We don't have to guess. We don't have to, you know. Yeah, no guessing. Brains, yeah. Right, like a year ago when we saw this patient and tried to, and try to um, kind of, uh, what's it called? And have to actually repeat that care like such such a long time mm -hmm. uh, from the last time they saw it. So I feel like if we if they were able to maybe take um, some of the guidelines that we have in place at each station and like kind of um, translate that into their own you know policies and procedures, then it would be a lot better, and they would be able to make sure that their success, you know, is, um, sorry, I'm like stumbling over my words, cut this, but <laughs> make sure that they um, are able to, you know, really understand that this is how you treat this type of patient every time, regardless if you, you know, have the supplies or not, they don't have to guess. Absolutely. Yeah, can I just chime in there real quick with that so that if the public knows that there's efforts being made, um, thank you, Adrian, there's efforts being made uh, in that light, because for the last two years, what we've been able to get done in Liberia has actually um, sparked um, some interest. Because I know the C, uh, the chief nursing officer, and some of our staff, you know, and that's always off the record. Basically, they have mentioned that um, the World Bank is actually collaborate, collaborating with them now, so that they can come up with a standardized um, policy procedure. So that even as we go there now, instead of us taking our own policies and procedures, which are of course still standardized, we'll be able to work from that. And then like you said, Adrian, it will be there always. So it won't just be for um, one hospital, it will be standardized for every hospital and stuff. So I think they're they're thinking about starting to work on something like that. And uh, they're very appreciative for the fact that this is what we've been trying to do for the last two years now is becoming national and other people are looking out of the country internationally to go to help to put their policies and procedures together to standardize so yeah i just want to throw that in there and, and, and that, that's important because i always say that you have to help yourself in yeah. order for other people to come in to help that's you that's right so the the movement that you guys have started is very is very huge for the country and i really Thank you. Want all of you um, for that and just did you want to add to that or no i'm I think everybody said, you know, what truly needs to be said and what they, you know, experience. And I had the opportunity just really briefly to to view ma many various hospitals and clinics. And I know that especially with recording and interviewing people after the, um, after, you know, our actual program, you know, was completed after that week, everyone's, like almost everybody's that answer, but their desire is for us to be able to um, reach out even past Monrovia, you know, and go out into you know, all the hospitals and the clinics out there. That's everyone's like sincere desire. Like, look at what Nurse and Nurse has, has done, is able to do, and has started doing. And we can't wait to be for it. Very good. Very good. Um, I think that everybody's here on the right track. Um, so the, the, the other thing, based on now your um, observations, uh, you know, what you've gathered, what is your goal, nurse to nurse? What, what is your goal? The goal uh, actually is to not just be the ones to go and, and uh, perform. The goal is actually to create a standardized um, policies procedure 
competencies so that and 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 actually duplicate our effort okay because yeah with duplication then you can be able to reach um all of the nurses because we alone can do it that's why we have these facilitators with us so that when we leave they can also be able to carry on and uh I'm thinking two to five years. I'm thinking five years down the road, we would like to see Liberian nurses, almost every single one of them with their equipment. Like I told them, put your stethoscope around your neck. Even if you're not assessing your patient, look professional. Mm -hmm. It makes you Very feel bad. good. It makes you feel good. We want the, um, the competencies and the confidence level of our nurses to really go up. And uh, we want to be able to reach as many as possible, not necessarily only like Giselle said, just Liberia. I mean, so Monrovia, we want to go to the uh, rural um, parts of Liberia, maybe do some regional right. ones, like, you know, possibly go to Phoebe and have all the Nima County or Lofa County meet there or something. But I, I'm sure that can be worked out. But the whole idea is, yeah, to reach almost every nurse. And you know, some people say, well, I'm opening my clinic, you know, and I'm doing that. I said, we're not in the opening clinic business yet. Right. We are in the business of making sure all the clinics that are open, every nurse that is working in there, come and get competent mm -hmm. by us. And if the Lord leads and the decision comes to a point where we feel like, okay, it's time to do this, then, uh, of course, he will speak to us and we will all know but for right now, we really want every single nurse to be competent and confident. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when you have confidence, you can do so much. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, so. and um, a lot of people tend to be very concerned about yeah. maintenance in Liberia. And this will go actually to healthcare as well. Mm -hmm. Because people could say, well, what happens when you turn your back? When nurse to nurse leaves Liberia, mm -hmm. are these uh, nurses still taking the blood pressure cup? Are they still taking, you know, the, the equipment around? Yeah. Are they still exercising professionalism? How do you assess that? Well, we just started one year and we're going to our second year. So we're trying to work on a system where these, uh, we can try to stay in contact with uh, the Minister of Health and Chief Nursing Officer and our staff. Um, because I know last year, Giselle, right, we did get videos from uh, from the staff of the, some of the nurses going to various hospitals right. and mm -hmm. actually talking to them and trying to interview them and see how they're doing. Because we're not there, so they're there. Right. So now, actually, we have a we have a team. We call the Nurse to Nurse Liberia and yeah. Nurse to Nurse USA. Oh, and they're awesome. Our facilitators, they don't yeah. play. Yeah. <laughs> they're excited about that, and they're taking yeah. this very seriously because now they feel a part of. Right. You know, the, the, the feel of just nursing overall, I mean, you might have bad apples, but majority of nurses get into this because of care. Yes. You know? and, and so what you guys are doing is is great and, and i'm sure these nurses are, are very very happy to, to have them but they are also doing this because that's their profession that's yeah. something that they love so even when you turn your right. back i'm sure again like yeah. i said nobody's perfect that's but when you turn your back people are going to yeah. remember this is my profession this is my career this is my livelihood so let me pay attention to what it is here mm -hmm. i i do know that's a lot of people's concern anyway what, what what can you guys say to that like what how do you how do you really feel about all this i know you said two years but it, it, i mean the impact probably feels like 10 years right yeah. um so can you talk to us a little bit about that feeling how you know this whole thing i think i personally feel like if i am not led i cannot succeed right i mean this is too big we really didn't think it would have gotten this big. <laughs> we were <laughs> thinking about just taking scrubs and be done with that. That's it. <laughs> and uh, something kept tugging on our hearts. And when we came back, we were like, wow. Actually, to be honest, we got done distributing scrubs 2019. Uh, we started on Monday. By the time we got to Bong Mines and Phoebe, we were pooped out, to be honest. Mm. But we got, we were done on Friday and then we turned over the uh, dump truck and, and, and stuff back to a nurse, um, to Samaritan person, told them thank you for everything. And then Saturday, we were so exhausted. 
we decided to just take a break. And then Sunday, my cousin who lives on the Simpore River said, look, I know you guys are tired. How, how about you guys just come and eat and have, spend some time? And driving through the city, Emma, and something came over me. I am going to call it a deep depression. I could not shake it off. And then I did talk to uh, my spiritual father about that one time. And he said to me, he said, it was actually the Holy Spirit talking at your heart. Mm, mm, mm. I could not shake it off. And I was just crying and crying the whole time. We're driving because, the, you know, everything was closed. I was Sunday. No stores open. We drove right. from ELWA Junction straight through, you know, Tottenham Boulevard, straight through um, Johnson Street Bridge, all the way across the bridge. And all I was just looking at the town and all I could see was wow this is not the place years ago we left mm. and i went into this deep deep depression i cried the whole day my husband finally said how about we start thinking about what to do because i just look at it that the elephant me was just too big where do you right. start from? right 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 you know mm. and basically mm. and that's how basically and i realized that we could not do this by ourselves we had to have the help of god to lead us, direct us. And most of us that have been on these trips basically have been spiritually filled. I've always prayed for people that will come who are being led, not just people who will come and talk because I think the talking time for Liberia is over. It's a while it's over. It's for us to do now. So that's what makes me feel like God is at the center of this. And every time I try to make a move, I go to him and say, um, do you really want me to do this? You got to show me something. Amen. And he always does. And if he doesn't, I still wait. But I think we've talked about that, Emma, before. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you're, and what you're doing um, is so big. You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I just tried to refer a lot of people to come to your YouTube video. Because without God, I don't know if you could even accomplish what you're doing. You are inspiring the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you. You know, you're inspiring a lot of people, giving hope. Thank you. And I think that's where we're able to come uh, come together because it has to be by God's grace that we can even get the provision to do right, what we do. Right, right, right. You know, and the right people with the right mind right. and with the right intention because Amen. people come with different intention and you never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so how can you do this without God? I mean, seriously, you can't tell. Yep. He's the only one that can lead you. So I don't know if that answers anything. I know Giselle... She's a woman of God as well, and everybody, <laughs> but we could go on and on about God thing, but he's been leading us, to be honest with you. My husband has been, a, he's been a big, big help. Yes, you have to give a shout out to Mr. Mator. Oh, I Mr. Mator, yeah, for sure. He's the brain behind everything. He's not yeah. only bringing that paper, uh, yes. for them, well, he's not just the brain as He does as well, everything, on yeah. this, uh, organization, and so... We want to applaud him for that. Um, Thank Giselle you. and Adrian, for Mata, anything to add to that? I was going to say for Mata, or she was going to say something. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, I think I think uh, the CEO said it all. Um, just a Proverbs eighteen talks about how a man's gift make a room for him and bring him before great men. Mm -hmm. So go have. Pardon us, you guys. You know, interruption to the America. Just <laughs> it. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can yeah, hear we you can now. now. We can hear you now. You stop for a moment. Oh, oh, okay. You said yeah, I was. Thing, yeah. yeah, I was. I was saying Proverbs eighteen sixteen says, "A man gift make a room for him and bring at him before great men." So we all have gifts and talents. And I believe for most of us here, the nurses, that's our gift. So it's not basically becoming rich, but doing something that God has put in you to care for other people. So when you, okay. when you take that care that what the CEO has done, it makes you known, not because you're rich, not because he's smart, but because the gift that has been given to you by God, you're using it rightfully. So I'm just glad to be a part of this platform. I'm glad to be part of Nurse to Nurse. And I just hope that we'll just keep claiming, claiming, and claiming, and going higher. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Amen. Um, Adrian. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I believe that you guys really um, were able to kind of say everything that was on my heart with it. Um, and I really feel like God has has um, touched my life this last year through nursing. Um, at one point, I didn't know if I was going to continue, um, but moving into the ER and now into this organization, I really, it sparked me again. And so um, I'm just really thankful that, you know, I knew nurse to nurse was going on when I first became a nurse and I was hesitant and I was like, I'm not worthy, but um, I really feel like God has allowed me to have confidence in my nursing skills, even though I am a young nurse. And he's really, you know, laid it on my heart to give back. And um, it's it's something that I'm grateful that, you know, um, I'm able to experience and I'm just, I'm just, I have all the faith in the world that um, with God's help, you know, all of the different points that we touched on will, will come to uh, fruition. So. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah. I mean, like, like, like even Adrian said, I feel like everything was pretty much like said that was also on, on my heart. You know, it's just been, words really are insufficient, you know, to, to describe um all that's occurred and by the grace of god all that will continue to occur it's been a, such a blessing just to even not even just have, having my in my hands in anything but just being a witness to seeing mm -hmm. how the lord places everything together and how everything's been coming together how he sends the right people you know at the right times he's so strategic and we just pray you know that the the light of christ you know and, and the love of god will continue to shine through what we strive to do as he continues to use us for his glory so amen amen mm -hmm. i think that's very important from just distribution of shrubs to defining the purpose of mm -hmm. you're not just distributing shrubs but i'm putting it in the direction to transform people's lives and so um very important and and, and thanks for, for for you know stating all of that you ladies on the other aspect is that people are watching this and wonder oh I'm not a nurse, but how can be how can I be a part? Um, what do you say to that? <laughs> Sorry, I'm animated. I'm always. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, does I can tell you, she is very much into the media. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a nurse. <laughs> not a nurse. <laughs> right. I, I bless God for nurses, uh, but you don't have to be a nurse to be a part of nurse to nurse, you know. And, and it, there's actually a lot of people now who once they heard, especially this year, who are like, we want. I, God's given me some type of gift or just a desire. I want to just be part, to just to be able to con contact nurse to nurse via the website, via um, uh, we're on social media, Facebook, Instagram. Um, we have our our email address. Um, I mean, if you think of any any other way that people can be able to contact us at all, www.nursetonurseworld.org. Mm -hmm. um, contact us in any way. We'll be able to um, get back to you. You can be right helping in any way that you can we have yeah. people here god bless all the people here in the u.s who have helped us with packing things i mean packing things that we've shipped you know people help in so many various ways whenever they can however they can so any way that you're able to um be of an assistance at all is greatly appreciated contact us in any way via website via social media um yeah so Yep, there's a good point there too because even Adrian's dad, mm -hmm. he's an engineer. My husband Joseph Mato, like I said, he's also an engineer. They'll be the first to tell you we're not we're not nurses, but we're the go force. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, they, they were instrumental. <laughs> but you mm -hmm. see, they're they're also engineers, so they're helping to systematize mm -hmm. things. Right. Right. You right. know, so there is so many ways that you can help nurse to nurse. We're just starting. This thing is blowing up. <laughs> And we're going to need all the help we can. We need money too. So you can send us some cash. You know, you can come to the gala October 14th. Man. We're going to have our gala. And I know Adrian is, that's where it caught Adrian's heart from the gala. Because, you know, we've got nurses from various states now that are getting very excited. Thank you, Emma, for bring, sending my loan and, uh, and uh, to Jennifer first. Huh? And now they're right. all... Yeah, they're calling a lot of nurses that I've been speaking with. And, and so we're all going to get together October 14th to raise funds. And besides, to just have fun and have some camaraderie before we make that trip in March. Because when we get there, we do have a great time, you know? 
Mm-hmm. You do have a great time. But yes, definitely. And, 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 and you, you viewers, uh, let me just put something to your attention. When you go to a hospital, you don't only see the nurses or the doctors. No, you, no. See the, you see somebody who's maintenance. You see somebody right. who, yeah. uh, uh, who, who yeah. does the, the bringing up right. the, all the bears. Uh, and, and, right. and, and all to say is that a whole team can a whole team. To, to to the goal that needs to be accomplished. So if you're a janitor, you can go and train people there. Right. If you cook in the kitchen, you can go and train people there. Mm-hmm. And so your role is very vital to everything, mm-hmm. you know, to, to this whole process. So mm-hmm. you you don't have to be a nurse. I'm not a nurse, but I'm interested in this. Yeah. And, and yeah. I have to, to be a part uh, in any way I can help. So uh, if you're wondering, you can definitely be a part. Um, the other aspect is, as they've said, um, money, and 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 this is money that will be allocated to equipment. Right. Um, and, and so it's very important that uh, we we donate uh, mm-hmm. five dollars or ten dollars or share yeah. this with your friends. So it's very very important. Put in my simple colloquia, you guys. Right. Okay. <laughs> I love it. You can you can share with your friends and that five dollar could be your your coffee. Just donate, and um, you know the yep. people will receive those equipment and they will foster their skills. Yeah, yeah. And so that is actually really important. If you're wondering mm-hmm. how you can donate, please don't send money to me. I will put the website here on the Thank screen, you. and <laughs> the link to the website. You go there and you donate. Nothing is too small. Okay, no, it's your heart. No. If you have five dollars, like I said. Yeah. Like I said, and you share the links, you have done well. Right. Um, so let us help to elevate what our sisters and brothers are trying to do for our country. Mm-hmm. And um, consequently, we will move to other places as well. But we, in order for Liberia to move forward, we all have to pitch in. Yes, we and, have to. And, yeah. and, and that's where viewers, I'm counting on all of you to share yeah. the links to donate, okay? Yeah. Our yeah. hands that closes don't receive. So mm-hmm. if you guys can open your hands to donate, God will always bless you. I'm being very yeah, yeah. I'm this. I'm a testimony for that. And so you guys, please donate to, to this cause. Um, any other thing to add before we can close? Well, we just want to encourage nurses all over from every state. Because the thing is, we all got trained in you know, the same system. And that's the thing about having a system, um, you know, situation. Um, we, it's funny how we all never met. We just talk on the phone and we talk about, okay, which skill station would you like to run? We just talk. But when we met in Paris last year, before we all took off, or la- this year when we all met in Brussels, we were speaking the same language. It's very exciting. We were speaking the same language. So nursing assistant all the way up to nurse practitioners i'm i've got so many nurse practitioners calling now just to be a part of what we're doing and we're going to do the basic training so please come join us um we are we have meetings once a month um every third thursday we have meetings um on zoom and it's usually around 7 30 just for one hour so um, during that time is where we talk, how we strategize on, and people will bring suggestions as far as what kind of skill. We want to increase the skill stations this year, next year when we go. So we need everybody. And I know together we can make something happen. The nurses over there are really waiting for us. And if you, like I said, if you're not a nurse, but you know a nurse, or you've been taken care of by a nurse, you know, hey, that's what it's all about. Let's okay. do it. Thank you, Emma, so much for just having us on this platform um, right. to share what we're doing because we really, we got to move. Like you always say, we, we move. move. We'll speak. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. <laughs> Um, it, you know, it has been a pleasure having you ladies on and we will be having you back to talk about the gala soon because, you know, yeah. we need more people to go there yes. and um, help move this thing forward. Yeah. Mm. It's going to be a great night. It's going to be fun. Absolutely. I'll so be there too. We will dress Woo-hoo! up, we will dance, we will <laughs> eat, we will raise money and we will get to know each other better. Amen. It is always Amen. good. Thank you, Emma. 
now that you've watched this video let's hear from you are you willing to volunteer are you in the position to give perhaps do you know anyone in the healthcare field who could contribute to this organization i want to hear from you